Wolves are actually one of my favorite animals. I've been fascinated by wolves from a young age, and I really enjoyed learning more about them in researching this episode. Grey wolves were once one of the most widespread animals in the world, with populations ranging across nearly the entire landscape of the Northern Hemisphere. Today, they inhabit less than two-thirds of their original territory, and this is largely due to persecution from humans. Most of us have heard the tales, Little Red Riding Hood, The Three Little Pigs, The Boy Who Cried Wolf, all amassing to form this image of a monster in the human subconscious that still permeates our tales today. Just look to Hollywood to see what I'm talking about. But hey, to be fair, some are getting it right. The problem is that there are actually people who believe this notion that wolves are inherently evil. While it is true that wolves have caused human death in the vast expanse of human history, the reality is far from the fiction. A person is more likely to be killed by an elevator than by a wolf. And let me tell you, I have nightmares about those things. They're like floating death traps. So while I take the stairs, let me give you a bit of a more realistic perspective on these elusive creatures. Grey wolves are the largest member of the canids, or dog family. Depending on who you ask, the grey wolf species is broken up into five subspecies, which are the Mexican grey wolf, the Rocky Mountain wolf, the Algonquin wolf, the Buffalo wolf, and the Arctic wolf. They typically appear grey in color with a lighter belly, but they can vary from brown to red and black to white. The males are typically larger than the females and weigh in at about 13 chesters on average, or, you know, 130 pounds. They're social animals and live in packs, usually with somewhere around 8 to 12 members, though some groups have reached 30 individuals. These packs are usually composed of related members and led by an alpha pair. It's typical that the alpha pair will be the only two breeding wolves in a pack, with exceptions occurring when food is plentiful. Grey wolves are monogamous and will mate for life. Breeding season is usually at the beginning of the year and, just like a dog, because yes, ancient wolves really are the ancestors of our Fido family members, a female wolf will be pregnant for 63 days. The pups will be born in a den with an average of six per litter, and they will be raised by the entire pack. At about five months old, depending on food supply, the pups will begin to help with the hunt. After they reach one year of age, they may either incorporate into the pack or venture out to find a different pack to join, sometimes traveling hundreds of miles. Packs do their best not to cross paths by scent marking their territory and howling in that iconic lonely voice. A pack's territory can span anywhere from 50 to over 1,000 square miles, depending on scarcity of food. Grey wolves typically eat large hooved animals such as boar, deer, elk, and even moose and muskox, though they will also consume smaller prey such as beavers and rabbits. They're able to eat up to 20 pounds of food in one sitting, and they can live off of that for days, or even weeks. On average, they need somewhere around 7 pounds of food per day, though they can survive on 2 if the need arises. One of the biggest myths surrounding grey wolf eating habits is that they compete with sportsmen for trophy animals, but this is inaccurate. Wolves are observant animals and will seek out either young animals or old, sickly ones to be taken down, not the stronger animals in their prime. This actually helps to keep the population of wild ungulates healthy as it decreases the distribution of bad genes. Humans can't seem to get the hint though, as grey wolves are killed annually by people seeking to destroy their competition, so to speak. Grey wolves are also killed because they are believed to be a menace to livestock. In a report completed by Washington State University researchers, it was discovered that for each wolf killed in up to 25% of the grey wolf population, there would be an increase in livestock death by 5%. It's speculated that this may happen when alphas are taken out, leaving the members of the pack to breed freely, which, in a sick twist of irony, means more wolves. The best thing we can do is learn to deter grey wolves from our livestock with guard dogs, lights, and sounds. In reality, grey wolves are withdrawn animals who have grown weary of the people who have destroyed their populations for centuries due to misguided beliefs and false fairy tales. They're out of their element in our overdeveloped landscapes and prefer woodlands, forests, grasslands, deserts, and even tundras. Upon meeting a human, most wolves will disappear into the shadows. I knew this episode would get long. It's tough to rein it in and keep it short when I'm talking about one of my all-time favorite animals. I'll leave you guys with this. If you're going to pass along wolf stories, pass along the ones that shed wolves in a light that's more akin to their true nature, such as the stories of Okami, who would help weary travelers find their way